It's never been easier to remove objects in Lightroom. However, there are three problems you may encounter while removing objects, and I have an easy solution for each. Plus, stay until the end for a bonus tip. Now, last year in Florida, I came across this family of burrowing owls, and some of them were putting on a little show for me. And then the adults were watching either from a distance or they were standing on top of this little perch right here. And there was these little markers throughout the area that indicated that there was a nest in the area. So us humans would know that they're there and not to disturb them. But it became a problem because they were in some of my photos and I had to either get creative with my cropping or remove them in Photoshop. Now, we have the same editing tools in Lightroom in terms of removing objects, and we don't need Photoshop for that anymore. Now, you might be familiar with it already, but I wanna go through on how to use it, and then I will reveal the problems that you're going to encounter with some photos and how to overcome those problems. So the remove tool that I'm referring to is called Generative AI, and it's available via this icon right here. If you click on that, it will open up that panel, or you can press the letter Q to open it up. Now, if your Lightroom interface looks different and it looks like this, then your remove tool is going to be right here. It's the exact same tool, but the keyboard shortcut is different. You're gonna use the letter H to activate it or just click on the icon and the tool works exactly the same in this version of Lightroom as it does in Lightroom Classic. Now, removing this object is super duper easy, but we wanna make sure that we turn on Generative AI first, and then all you have to do is paint over the object that you want to remove. Once you do that, you're gonna get this mask refinement so you can add or subtract to it. I just like to include outside of that object like I did here, just a little bit to give it some information on how or what to replace it with. So it's going to analyze the overall image, but it's going to take into account the overlay area more so to match that area with the object that's going to be replaced. So we're gonna click apply here and then Lightroom is going to analyze the image and then it's going to generate an AI replacement for that object and boom, it's gone. How awesome is that? I love it. Now, there is a little bit of a problem up here at the top. It's including a little bit of that stick still. So what we can do is if we're not happy with the result, all we have to do is come over here to variations and it's going to give you three different options or three different variations. Just navigate to each one to see if you get a better result. Unfortunately, the other two are worse than the first one. So what we can do now is click on refresh and it will reanalyze the image and try and come up with three better variations. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So in this case, it doesn't look like it's going to remove that little bit along the edge which I find to be the biggest problem with this is when you have an object on the edge, it's not always perfect. So what you can do is just simply go over that area again to target just that little bit versus trying to replace everything at the same time. And this usually fixes it within one or two extra tries. So let's see if it does. So it doesn't look like it's going to work. So what we need to do now is something a little bit more advanced or a couple extra steps. But when I tried this the first time earlier, it removed it perfectly in one try. But I wanna to navigate to another image here for another object along the edge that causes even more problems. So I've already fixed it, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And here's that stick again, it's just poking through the edge here. Now, how did I get rid of that? Well, if we press the letter H in Lightroom Classic, it's going to show the edits that I applied. So I have three different edits here based on these markers. And if you hover over it, it's gonna show you where I applied that brush 
and where it's copying from one portion to another. And if you hold down your command key, or actually, I'm sorry, the Alt or Option key here, that's gonna give you the scissors tool. So you're gonna click and drag around that. So Alt, Option, click, drag, release, and it deletes those edits. Now, sometimes if you're not getting the result you want, sometimes it's just better to start over, and that's why you may want to delete them. Now, in Lightroom, because the keyboard shortcut for the Remove tool is the letter H in this version, you have to select Show Overlay on Hover. So when I hover over the image, you're gonna get this little blue marker here showing where that edit is applied, and then Alt, Option, drag around to delete. All right, so from now on, everything's gonna be done in Lightroom Classic because it's all pretty much the same from now on. So here's the problem. We have an item along the edge and it's trying to analyze around that object. And because we have an edge here with nothing on it, it doesn't really have any information for filling in that object along the edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Generative AI here, apply it, and then I'm gonna show you the solution for overcoming how to retouch an object along the edge. Now, I spent probably an hour on this yesterday, and this is probably the best result that I've gotten with generative AI. So again, from one image to the next, from one day to another, the results are not consistent. Sometimes you're gonna get better results than other times. Let's see if there's a different variation that's even better, that one's worse, and then that one's even worse than the previous. So I can continue going through and refreshing until I find something, but that's time consuming. So here's a solution to the problem. Now, I already mentioned you can go over this little area again, but let's say that doesn't work. Actually, let's go to one of these other variations to make this a little bit more difficult. We're gonna go with this one. Now, there's also another problem. I'm not sure you can see or not at this time. Let me press the letter H to, sh to hide this marker right now, but there is another problem showing up right now that is an issue with high ISO images. So I shot this at ISO 5600, and I'm gonna show you that problem if you don't see it and the solution for that one. But first, let's get rid of this. And to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch tools. So if I show the tool icon here again, it's showing that I'm using this mode here, the remove mode. What I wanna do is I want to switch to the stamp tool. And because this is selected, when I click on the stamp tool, it's going to auto magically switch to that tool. And then this is known as the clone tool. What it's gonna do is it's going to clone the pixels in this area over the area that I want to fix or the object I want to remove. So sometimes it may you know, place this somewhere else in the image and all you have to do is click and drag on it to move it into a position that's closer to the object that you wanna remove so that, the, so that those luminance values, colors, textures, and everything are closer to that object that you wanna remove. Right now, it's not looking pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the feather from 100 and we're gonna move it down and it magically disappears. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and now you can see that object has been removed but it doesn't always work. Sometimes there's gonna be another problem that arises when you have to do this multiple times because let's say you have something more like this. Okay, so now what you can do is you can apply the remove tool in this area. Now I need to go back, I'm gonna undo that, Command or Control plus the letter Z because I switched my mode tool by clicking on this, but my stamp tool is still selected. So what I need to do is hit my escape key to deselect that tool. Now I can use the remove tool to create a new generative AI for this area. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it and hopefully it removes it. If not, that's okay because I wanna show you the problem that this creates with a high ISO and how to fix it. All right, so this little area right here is not better, it's actually worse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my refine button and I'm going to subtract 
from this area because I don't want to include it. Actually, I just want this little bit right here and I'm going to reapply. So you may need to apply this a couple more times in order to get rid of it completely if you're not getting the results that you want. All right, so it's much better. I'm going to go ahead and hit the delete key to delete that edit. It's much better with the clone tool here with the feather down lower. But let's say that doesn't work. So I'm going to go back to generative AI and I'm going to leave this in here for now because what I want to show you is let's go ahead and hit the escape key H to hide it. You can see there's a little bit of an outline right here, which is the problem with generative AI on images with a high ISO. It's creating this pattern or this texture that is different from the digital noise. So if you find that the remove tool removed the object perfectly, but it's leaving this texture behind, here's how to fix it. One way is to go into your detail panel here and make sure that your denoise is turned on. So it's off right now. And you can see that it's blurring the details in that texture area created by generative AI and the digital noise, and it's smoothing it out. Now, this is a huge distraction here. I, I get that, but let's just pretend like that's not there. But I can still kind of see that there's an outline around the area that I tried to fix. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this is really bugging me. So I'm going to go ahead and just use my clone tool here to remove this. And you can see that it selected this area over here. So I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to keep that feather down pretty low. All right. It's not perfect. There's still a little bit of an outline where the generative AI covered up and deleted the object. So denoise is applying a model for the for the noise, the digital noise, right? So it's not going to apply the same results or give you the same results for something that is not digital noise. In this case, this texture. So what you can try and do is the denoise AI, but it creates the exact same problem. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off luminance and I'm going to show you my solution that I prefer. If you're happy with that result, then you're good to go. But I know some of you use this third alternative app as well. So for those of you that do, this is the best solution because not only is it going to get rid of the digital noise, it's going to smooth out this extra texture that's being created by generative AI. And that app is Topaz Photo AI. So I'm going to go ahead and edit in. Let's see, where is it? Topaz Photo AI. I'm going to create a TIFF file. Now, I know you use this already if you do, but there's an extra step you need to take in order to get rid of this texture. We're not just going to apply denoise once we are going to apply it twice. Plus, we are going to target that area with a mask. Now, this is something that you can do in any other denoise applications, especially in Lightroom and Photoshop. And that is to apply more than one denoise model. So you can see the area right here. We have denoise being applied and it's beginning to remove that noise. And there it is. I can still kind of see a little bit of an outline. It's a little bit darker in that area. So what I'm going to do now is add an extra enhancement to that area. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the background and then I'm going to use extreme. And what that's going to do, it's just going to take all the noise, extra noise that is still there, digital artifacts and that texture that was created and it's going to smooth it all out by blurring it. So let's see here and boom, there it is. Nice and smooth. Now I know it's not perfect because I was spending a little extra time with this little area right here. It's too dark. I would spend more time getting this right, but editing and doing video tutorials at the same time doesn't always work out perfectly. But if you want to learn more about Lightroom, I have these Lightroom quick tip playlist 
right here. So check that out to learn more about Lightroom. Thanks for listening and have an awesome day.